on today's show. It's all about 10 awesome acoustic guitar players that you sh should know. So stay tuned. Hello, friends. Welcome to ex episode 167 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out, you've been playing for years. This is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you've always wanted to be. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and check out the description for all of the links from the show. We are going to have a wonderful time today. I'm here with my co-host, Scooter. How you doing, Scooter? Everything is fine in Georgia. And this is episode number 167. 167 That's correct. Which is like such a, it, it's incredible because I'm, I turned 167 today. <laughs> and so it's, it's all hanging. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you, that you don't look 167. You're really looking good. I've done a, a lot of bad things in my life, and it's it made me look this good. Well, uh, I'm telling you, you're hanging in there. I, uh, I, I well, anyway, I won't get into the being pickled and all of those. Kind of <laughs> I'm on the Keith Richards diet. That's right. He's looking. He's looking fantastic lately too. His <laughs> well, well, folks. Uh, we got a bunch of folks in here already today. We are going to be talking about the 10 acoustic guitar players that you should know. These could be, you know, classic virtuoso electric guitar, I mean, acoustic guitar players, or they could be new, uh, undiscovered talent. And basically, Scott and I, are. I'm going to give uh, five and Scott's going to give five. And we're also going to, if you have some recommendations for people to listen to, uh, Go ahead, put those in in the uh, comments, and we will get to those as we go. But I'm going to start with Scott in just a second. Um, we do want to say hi to a few folks as we go. Let's see here. Evan is here. And let's see here. Dean is here. And Steve's here. Hey, Steve. Good to see hey, you, man. The Draper. That's right. <laughs> Jim's here. Hey, Jim. Good to see you, man. And uh, and Kelly's here. Kelly says, Billy Strings and Travis Meeks. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if those those made our list. And this is just, uh, basically, I said, Scott, you pick five. I'll pick five. And uh, and we did uh, have a little conversation in between, so there, there aren't any overlaps. There could have been. There could have been some big overlaps there. Um, so I'm going to be plus one-ing. Um, several of Scott's and also which was really nice is there's a few on Scott's list that I didn't know about at all so I'm learning as we go okay are you ready so let's go ahead I am going to oh David's here I want to say hi to David before we before we keep going <laughs> okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get started uh, get everything set up here and Scott's gonna start what is who's the first acoustic player on your list Scott uh, I picked Mac McAnally as one. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I like that. Nice. I like that. <laughs> I'm backwards. But, uh, and, and it was kind of hard. I really enjoyed this topic when, when you called me and told me what the topic was going to be. And, and, you know, everybody has their own favorite w works for their ear and, and, and what they like. And there are so many talented just crazy talented people out there with the tapping and, and all of that stuff. Uh, and, and if it's done for me, if it's done on the, on the short side, I, I can't listen to, uh, you know, hours of tapping craziness. I, right. I can't do that. But Mac and Allie, uh, came to mind. I, I love him not only as a guitar player because he plays piano, he plays a lot of things, but, uh, it's just his stylings. Uh, they're they're simple and 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 very very romantic. Uh, his chord progressions are wonderful. His songwriting ability, you know, it, it, I, I love those kind of people that when I'm when I'm listening to them, I think, hey, how did he know how to write that song? That's part of my life. You know, I live that. And and so a lot of my picks on acoustic guitar players are going to have that certain something. What I've done is I have gone ahead and gone to Wikipedia 
And I've, <laughs> I've decided I'm going to read the first paragraph of each of them. So if anyone doesn't know. So uh, Mac McAnally, uh, Lyman is his first name, actually. Lyman Corbett McAnally Jr., uh, uh, known professionally as Mac McAnally, is, is an American country music singer, songwriter, session musician, and record producer. In his career, he has recorded 10 studio albums, eight singles. Two of his singles were hits on the Billboard Top 100. Six more on the Hot Country country Songs charts. Um, so if you go to the show notes page, we have a video, one of the, the best moments from each of our players, too. So if you're not familiar... Um, you can head over there and check them out. Scott, where did you first uh, start to listen to Mac, or where, where was he introduced to you? I was in Nashville many, many years ago, and he has written for so many people, and, and I'd hear a song, not necessarily by a country group that I really followed, like Alabama, for example. I, I mean, they were very hot back when, a long time ago. I was, I looked just like this though back then. This is exactly how I looked. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I heard this song that Alabama was doing and I thought, man, what, what an awesome song. I, I'd love to hear one of the guys in Alabama just sit down with a guitar and play that song. And that's how I found out. I, I thought maybe one of them had wrote it, had written that song. And uh, it turns out it was Mac McAnally. And that's kind of what introduced me to him. And I started listening to, all of his stuff, and it was just, it was uh, ear opening. Awesome. Okay, so we've got Mac. Let's go ahead. What's your number two? Number two, uh, let's see, what did I write down here? Well, to me, he's like the ultimate, or as close as you can get to the ultimate, and that would be Tommy Emmanuel. And. <laughs> Did, I, did you pick Tommy Emanuel? Uh, I did. I'm amazed at my production value here. Go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But of all the acoustic guitar players, and, and I, I know that you lean towards electric. I know most of your audience leans towards electric. But if you, if you haven't listened to Tommy Emanuel, if you go way back now, Tommy was an electric player in, mm -hmm. in bands and and as smoking as he is on an acoustic, he does the same thing on an electric. But what I enjoy so much about Tommy Emanuel is I don't know of any picker, electric or acoustic, that has as much fun playing. The man loves it. I mean, when he plays and you watch him, it's just magical. Well, let's see here. So uh, William Thomas Emanuel... Uh, let's see here's an Australian guitarist songwriter and singer is known for his complex finger style technique energetic performances and use of percussive effects on the guitar um, this was one of the overlap ones he's one of my favorites too I knew that that you had gone for Tommy so I I, I held off on on that one but the the thing I, I've, I've researched him a lot and I thought, how could somebody so technically proficient be just kind of silly? <laughs> you know, he's a very silly guy, you know, and fun and having having a wonderful time. And it's it, for those of you who are students of mine, those of you who listen to the podcast a lot, I talk about the power of repetition and being able to go on autopilot and and when you see someone playing and they're having a wonderful time and just smiling and and it, it's infectious it makes you want to play right and it, usually Tommy Emmanuel is the person I'm thinking about at that time and and I so I researched his how does how does he do that does he I know he plays constantly he's pra he plays like 300 dates a year or something ridiculous like that and there's like there's solo shows i guess it's the only way he could do that you know and cost wise um and he practices after he plays a solo show what is show his shows are like two hours or three hours it, 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 these enormous shows and he goes he meets everyone says hi gets a sandwich and he goes back to the hotel room and practices absolutely right you know and um being a uh a gigging musician, 
I could count on no fingers on a hand of the musicians I met who went home after a gig and practiced. <laughs> they did other things, but practice was not one of them. So, uh, so he's a fantastic guitar player. I have uh, classical gas uh, on on the show notes page. His performance of that, which is just fantastic. Okay, so Scott, let's move on to number three. Who's your number three? Number three, I uh, went with one that you mentioned, one of your viewers, uh, um, and he's played with Tommy Emanuel as well. He he plays different styles, but mainly he's in the bluegrass. He came up through the bluegrass uh, route, but he, it, it doesn't stop him. He doesn't have to play just bluegrass, and that's Billy Strings. He's just he's as phenomenal as Tommy Emanuel. He enjoys playing. And, and that autopilot thing you were talking about, that's very important, whether you're electric or acoustic. Um, I noticed as I started playing guitar from the time I started to where I am right now. And when I mess up, when I'm playing live performances and I mess up, it's because I'm thinking about what I'm doing. If I right. let it go and just let muscle memory and, and from mind to hand to, to vocal cords happen it just happens magically and when i stop and think about one of those three things or whatever that's when it when it crumbles a bit and gets right. off. <laughs> <laughs> well i didn't know about billy strings um and and the wikipedia right uh this is what it says he was he's an american guitarist and a bluegrass musician that doesn't that didn't really tell me a whole lot there so so who did who uh where did you come across billy I actually happened upon him by accident, uh, just watching Tommy Emanuel stuff. Okay. And I, I saw them at a, an outside concert, uh, you know, dueling back and forth. And I was just, I was blown away. So I started following and watching uh, Billy. And he's in his 20s. He's a younger guitar player too. So th that was really nice to see a younger guitar player doing some really, really profound things on the guitar too. So that was, I had a fun afternoon checking some of these out. Let's and move on. Not, Let's, I'm sorry. He can, he can get out of bluegrass. I've seen him out of that box. He doesn't just, and, and it's almost a progressive bluegrass. Uh, it's like a uh, chartreuse bluegrass. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. So number four, scooters, number four, we have, yeah. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't really have gone on this program without bringing up James Taylor. And, uh, you know, I, I, I guess Cat Stevens and Jose Feliciano all back at that time were running through my brain when I first started playing. And James Taylor was just, uh, he's, he's, the, he's, he's pretty much one of my it, it go-tos. Right. So, well, it says here he's an American singer, songwriter, and guitarist. <laughs> he's a Grammy Award winner, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and one of the best-selling music artists of all time. Most people are pretty familiar with James Taylor, I would, I would think. He's had a big, um, big impression on on most uh, acoustic guitar players, I, I would think. Um, and we know we we've heard when uh, Jim was on, and you guys both gave. Uh, told a little bit about uh, your history um, growing, you know, as a, as a player and listening to James Taylor. So, so uh, couldn't, couldn't leave him out. Good man. You know, he's, he's got his own style. Mm -hmm. He developed it and, and, and he's always been true to it and his production, everything. He, he keeps it simple and, and a lot of space. Uh, it's just wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Let's get to Scooter's, Number five pick, and that is? Well, Leo Cuck, uh was probably the first guitar player. I think he and Feliciano were probably the first guitar player that when I saw him on TV or something, it was like, oh, man, what what is this? This guy is amazing. Of course, back then he was playing uh, predominantly 12 string. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, after I, I learned how to play the guitar. I learned on a classical. And uh, uh, and then I immediately said, I got to get a 12-string. You know, I, I need this sound. And 
And Leo Kotke, you know, he's uh, he was like the the white Richie Havens. Me. Leo Kotke is one of the ones that we could have shared on this one. And and uh, I was introduced to Leo Kotke live in a concert. I had no idea who he was, and this was in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, in Philadelphia. And I went to see a uh, Chet Atkins, or Aikens, depending on where you come from. Uh, he has he would do these um, certified guitar player tours where he'd have him and three other players he liked, and they would just they would do a clinic in the afternoon, then they, they would do a concert at night. And I was fortunate enough to go to the clinic. And uh, it was, you know, a bunch of guys up there. I think it was Steve Warner and uh, Leo Kotke and, and a guy named Larry Carlton. You know, he was there too. And, and Chet Atkins. And they were taking questions and all of those kind of things. And for the first, like, 20 minutes, this guy, Leo Kotke, he was just just telling jokes almost a half hour just just and just rolling and i figured well well he's probably the the mc you know what i mean he's the he's just this you know i had, I had no idea and they all sat down and started to play and i was blown away he he would play 12 string he would play slide guitar like you've never heard before open tunings um just the, would run the gamut of the different sounds that that you'd associate with acoustic guitar he's a fantastic guitar player very funny guy too um and i'll spare you the the wikipedia for for him <laughs> and also tom backing up tommy emmanuel is a certified guitar player as well that's right and, and for those of you who don't know that's a um a, a chet atkins uh he would pick players who he respected and thought they were pushing forward <clears throat> the art <clears throat> excuse me, the art of learning guitar and playing guitar. And, and so there's a few of them. I think it's just one left, right? And Pat and Pat Bergeson, Jerry Reed was, was one, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm hoping to get Pat Bergeson to guest on one of your electric, uh, a friend of mine in Nashville and Pat, uh, he toured for so many years with Chet Atkins. He was Chet Atkins guitar player. Right. He also, uh, is now touring with uh, Tommy Emanuel. So, well, that sounds like fun. That sounds like a plan. We'll see if we can make, good make that happen. He That's played right. really good acoustic. Awesome. And and you had one. You had a little a bonus a bonus player there. Oh, my cousin Jim. Jim. <laughs> he uh, he's he's not stuck in a style either. He uh, he plays all kind of genres that. Uh, on the acoustic, but he's just masterful. His touch, uh, and probably in in later years, uh, the last twenty years maybe or so, I, I've learned so much from him, uh, touch and feel and and, and expression that uh, I owe him so much. And one of my favorites. And we have a uh, really good clip, uh, one of his uh, acoustic solos. Um, from one of Reba's shows uh, on the show notes page as well. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, so there, there's Scott's. Um, before I get started with mine, I'm going to head over to the comments, and we're going to see what we've got here, if anyone has any any other ones. I think we had, let's see here. Kelly said Billy Strings, which we talked about in Travis Meeks. Okay, uh, and then... Let's see here. Captain Splendiferous says, yes, got an acoustic for my birthday. Great time leak. Awesome. Awesome, Captain. Captain. Um, let's see here. Kevin says, I like a guy named Richard Gilowitz. I uh, used to see him when PB brought him to a local music store. I'm not, not familiar with him. I'd like to check them out. Um, let's see here. David says, James, the only one I ever heard of. So there's there's plenty of really cool guitar players and cool clips, David, to, to check on the um, on the website. It should be underneath the video right now. I should have a link to that right now. Uh, Dean seen James Taylor in concert, said it was a great show. And Kenny Darty, Darty says, Kenny, oh, Kenny, right. It says Keb Mo. That's right. Kenny. Keb Mo's a good one. Well, 
my, my brother Kenny. That's right. That's right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started with mine. Let's see here. So my first is Tony Rice. Now, Tony Rice um, passed away. Gosh, it's been a it's been a, a, a year to it feels like it just happened. It's been a, it's been a little bit. And um, five or six months. I think. Is it? Oh, is it is that recent? Okay. He um, when I was kind of discovering bluegrass in the '90s and early 2000s, and I was just kind of I had been to actually a, a bluegrass festival and enjoyed it. And I just thought, Hey, you know, I'm going to expand my horizons a little bit. I'm going to get into bluegrass. And then you start to hear a lot of, uh, similar sounding artists. Bluegrass is a very identifiable style. It's very, it's got a certain things that you do, you know, and, um, but, but that's also nice because when you get someone who has a really big personality and, and maybe not even vocal but like a musical personality it really allows that to show through you can you know it, it and i came across um tony rice as a lead guitar player and it it was really really interesting um he was playing it was almost jazz like over top of these things he's playing putting chords in that, that aren't there um just playing and, and effortless just playing effortless, it, wonderful uh, melodies and wonderful technique at the same time. And I, then I found out then he was a very respected bluegrass player, plays with everybody. And I started to listen to him from there. And I said, this is where m myself, a electric guitar player who's interested in this music, this is kind of where I can kind of come in. And th that was where I could put my foot in the door and say, okay, I'm going to learn some of his stuff. And then it starts to make sense. I could see the transition from like blues, jazz, rock, those kind of things. And then going into bluegrass through his playing. And I uh, was very fortunate to see him play. I went to see Earl Scruggs play in, I think it was Wilmington. It was a grand at Wilmington, Delaware. And he, Tony Rice been opened up, didn't even know it. Right. So I got, got to see him play. Fantastic. Um, so if you guys check him out, it would be worth your while. Uh, my number two pick is Michael Hedges. I don't know how many Michael Hedges passed away a very long time ago in the nineties. Um, and he was ahead of his time. Uh, he could be playing right now and the things that he played in the nineties and be trailblazing. Fit, he'd fit right in. Yeah, it, it, it's it, if if you go back and in fact, if you look at the clip that I have on the show notes page, and it's not a very good quality clip, and it, I I don't really know what concert it was from, um, it, you know, and it's in the old smaller format and everything like that, and it's just like where you know is this the new guy on the scene? It's just amazing. He would play uh, guitars with a it looks like it ha would have a harp on top of the regular guitar harp and it's guitar. actually harp guitar and it's actually bass strings, different drone strings that he would play. He would do the, the tapping, the fret that, you know, the, ta the, the, uh, the percussiveness on there and would do a lot of, it was, if you listen to the guys who do looping now, the acoustic loopers, there's, there's a lot of them. They, you know, they do all, the, he was doing that before they, there was a looper. You know, he was doing that all himself without a loop pedal. Why I think that this styling of tapping and mm -hmm. and and stuff—he's the one that really brought that into focus. Yeah, and and went through a bunch of different styles. I mean, I've I had one of his albums that was just—it was almost like guitar. It was like it was like um, atmospheric music, and then he'd have other ones that was more of a rhythm. And actually, he was a good singer too. Uh, you didn't hear the, that; those things were kind of put to the side. It was mostly his instrumental music came out. But if you're into that, if you're into, I have several students who are into the, the the loop, the acoustic looping and tapping and all those kind of things. He's the guy to take a listen to, Michael Hedges. Okay, so my third is um, actually I'm cheating. There are two people here, Rodrigo y Gabriela. 
And let's see here. It's uh, Rodrigo Sanchez and Gabriela Quintero. Uh, they are a Mexican acoustic guitar duo. And they uh, play nylon string guitars. Uh, but it's much more than that. It's, it's just um, over the top blending of styles of music like from flamenco to heavy metal and all in between uh gabriella does a lot of the the percussion plus the the chordal things and rodrigo does a lot of the the lead parts and 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 they overlap on chords Uh, a lot of instrumental stuff going on not too many instrumental players have been signed lately and, and uh i think they were discovered they went to to Ireland, they were discovered uh, busking in Ireland. That's that's where they got in. From there, went all over the world playing these huge concerts. <laughs> and uh, so, if you haven't listened to them, if you like, especially if you know you're a rock person and you know you you like that style of stuff, this is something that you can sink your teeth into. They're they're very very different, um, very high energy too. And as I recall, she's really good looking. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they're um, they're really good. They're really good. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna. I've got two more. Uh, number four for me is Keb Mo. So Kenny, there you go. We got Keb Mo in there. Um, Keb Mo, Kevin Roosevelt Moore. If, if I didn't know, it was Roosevelt. Um, it's fantastic, fantastic all around musician, um, world class singer, uh, world class songwriter, and usually his guitar playing, you know, is not talked about a whole lot. His, his songs is is the big thing. He's an incredible guitar, actually an incredible electric guitar player too. Uh, very, 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 and and. We're talking acoustic guitar, and he plays resonator, acoustic resonator guitar. A lot of the times, he plays everything, but that's his his main thing is is a is a dobro style guitar. Um, that the songs, am I wrong? Uh, just staying in the pocket, playing an acoustic guitar, playing slides, singing, keeping the time, keeping the bass going on like that is, is just a, a masterful thing, um, and also. He has a bit of the early blues style, and, and more so in the beginning of his, his early albums. He kind of branched more into like soul and, and those kind of things later on. But but if you really like early blues music, and this would be a modern version of, of early blues music, he'd be someone that you would want to listen to. to what do you yep. think about Keb Mo? Gets no smoother and... You know, I wanted him on my list, but, uh, you know, I had a short five, right? But truthfully, if I I told you this, I've told many people this. If I was stranded on an island for the rest of my life till I died, if I could pick one player to listen to and not get sick of, it would be Kev Mo. He's a fantastic player. Okay. And I've got one left. We're right at about the half hour mark. So this is working perfect, perfect. Um, so his name's John Gom, and John Gom uh, is an English singer, songwriter, and performer. He uses a single acoustic guitar to create drum sounds, bass lines, and melodies simultaneously. His songs draw draw on a range of influences and styles, including blues, soul, rock, and even metal. Michael Hedges is a source of inspiration for him. So John Gom is someone who I found through a gear search. Uh, I was looking for, I was playing. He's frozen. He's frozen. Or he's frozen. This happens. This happens. I'm so old, it's it's hard for me to freeze. It's, it's hard to freeze me. There's... I'm not sure if if I'm still on or if Lee's still on, but just in case anyone's listening and I'm coming through, um, 
all of the guitar players that have been listed so far. Oh, thank you, Internet. Isn't that nice? <laughs> the Internet decided to let me back on. Okay. Well, you were frozen there for a moment, and I wasn't, so I kept talking. <laughs> it was my Internet. It just decided to kick me off just for a minute, but I'm back now. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we were talking about John Gom. Uh, I was looking at the Boss um, OC3, and there's something really special about that pedal and it's a it's a it's an octaver pedal you know it puts a low note underneath your playing but what this pedal does differently than a lot of the octave playing is it has a threshold level so it you can pick a frequency where it stops so you can set the low um note to come under your guitar and only up to an a note you know, so that when you're playing low on, you know, on low strings on the guitar, open position, it's only putting a low note underneath your lowest string, right? You don't get that weird, um, like a bass trying to play 15 notes at the same time. So it's, it's a neat, it's a neat pedal. And I was looking up that and one of the people who were demonstrating that pedal was John Gom. And he was an interesting guy and knew a lot about what he was talking about. And then he started playing. And I went, who, who is this? Who is this guy? And it's a Michael Hedges kind of thing. He's, he's a newer guy, does all the tapping. He does, uh, you know, a lot of looping and all of those kind of things. But the sound quality, the fidelity of his tone is amazing. And he he was he has different amplifiers for different frequencies of his different pickups. He has different preamps for different. He really takes it all to the next level. Um, but a really neat guy to listen to, and I have a good clip of him on the show notes page. So if you haven't heard John Gom, have you heard of have heard of him before? Not at all. No, first okay. time. Really, really neat players. So if you guys could have a second, check it out, and. Um, and there we go. I will definitely check him out because years ago I had a uh, an acoustic Alvarez with a stereo pickup, mm -hmm. and the, the pickup divided the top bass strings from the bottom treble strings, and I used a bass octaver on the top three because when I finger pick, I play a bass line basically to get a full big sound, and uh, it worked fabulously. You couldn't mm -hmm. you could strum with it because it would get muddy. I think right. that's what you were explaining there. Yeah. But uh, if you picked it, and uh, it, it was fabulous. It sounded like a, a huge bass. I think you would like the OC3. I think um, it, it does It does the old kind of boss, um, you know, octave underneath that, that's hard to deal with. But it the, the intelligent one where it stops at a certain frequency. Is it a brown, it a brown pedal? Yeah, it's a brown pedal. That's the one I had. Yeah. Well, there's the OC one and two. There's several different of the yeah. brown pedals. There's there's just the one that does that thing that he was doing on it. <clears throat> that I've got one. Next time I see, you, I'll let you let you have borrow it and see if it works for you. But you can strum. You can play. You can you know play. It you know, it doesn't affect your playing at all, right. and it, you can mix it down real low so it's not real noticeable. You know, so you just yeah. kind of feel it more too. It's a really neat pedal. Um, okay, so we're going to go now to back to the chat. See if we have any more. Let's see here. Dean says, I loved Eric Clapton's Unplugged. Yes, and that was one. I only have five uh, to pick from. Eric Clapton was one that I thought, but I thought he's so popular that I think every that's he's kind of it's kind of under uh, understood <laughs> you know he's he's Clapton and <laughs> and that's what <laughs> that's what it is so I didn't go for Clapton but he's he's fantastic fantastic player um let's see here Evan says Rodrigo E. Gabriella did a great Pink Floyd cover yeah they've done they've done a whole bunch of different stuff they played um 
from what I understand of the history, oh, I still have Kebmo up there. Let me uh, let me get rid of Kebmo for a second. No, from, don't get rid of Kebmo. <laughs> uh, let's see. So from what I understand, that they were in like a Mexican metal band in uh, Mexico City and just decided that they didn't want to do that anymore um, and went down to the shore, uh, just uh, those two, and got their nylon strings out and just played on like the boardwalks and stuff on, on the shore restaurants there. And they would play the metal songs that they were playing in their band, but with nylon strings. And people thought it was like classical music or, or something like that. And from there it just developed, you know, but they did a lot of, I think they played a lot of covers just like everybody does in the beginning, you know, and, and took from those things. So, so they were, yeah, they're, they're really interesting. Let's see here. Coke's here. What's happening, Coke? Good to see you. Um, uh, let's see here. Steve says, Scott, you may know him, Justin Johnson out of Nashville. Do you know Justin Johnson? No, but he knows who I am, though. Well, that's <laughs> I haven't heard of Justin either. <laughs> but, but, um, Steve, who, who, who does this? Is he a solo artist or does he play with somebody that we would know? Love to hear about Justin. Let's Steve, see here. He knows everyone. I mean, if you had to he pick does. any person that knows about guitar players, Steve Draper is the guy. Yes, he has. Uh, uh, Steve and I both have our Robin Trower amplifiers, we both got it at the same time. Uh, he's got, he has the more powerful one. He's got the, the hundred watt one. I have the 50 watt one, but so let's see here. Jim says Molly Tuttle and I'm not familiar with Molly Tuttle. Are you familiar? No. That's and Jim, is he an Australian, um, guitar player or she, uh, let's see here. And let's see here. Coke says Justin King functified. Not familiar with Justin King either. Uh, a lot of people. I'm going to go back after this is over and get all these names and have a good evening of some new music. This has been just just getting this together. Uh, I've been listening. I I one of the people that I had um, thought about putting down for my list was Joe Pass. Are you familiar with Joe Pass? Oh yeah. So Joe Pass is a jazz guitar player. And uh, usually plays like a 170, like a Gibson big hollow body guitar. And one of the albums that I just love of his, oh, he has several. It, it's the uh, Virtuoso albums. There's volume one, two, three. And I always, they, they're acoustic albums, really. They're not plugged in at all. Um, and so I always thought that was, it was an acoustic guitar he's playing, but I, and so I was going to put him down, but then I read up on it and I think it was his hollow body just unamplified, I think is maybe what they, how they did that. So I thought, eh, maybe not. But those albums, the Joe Pass albums, uh, the Virtuoso albums are fantastic acoustic albums that are really good. There's, it's jazz, it's blues, they're, it's all over the map. It's not just, you know, chord melodies, which is what he's famous for. Um, so let's see here. Coke says Molly tells amazing bluegrass cross picker blazing speed. Awesome. I'm going to check that out. I'll be able to check some of these out too. This is great. I, it's good for me. I, 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 I say if anybody hasn't played any Keb Mo or anything, a good one to look at too. That's a lot of fun is uh Keb Mo on uh live from Daryl's house. Um, oh Yes. Oh man, it's a wonderful uh, video. The, a lot. There's a lot of great um, live from Daryl's house oh, yeah. episodes. That's you can the, get lost in that show. Yeah, I had um. What what does that come on? What channel is that on? Is that? I just I go to YouTube and I they're, on, they're on YouTube live, live at Daryl. Yeah, one house we lived in, we ha had the channel that they originally. It was some sort of cable channel. That was it. Um. So Steve says solo and plays a shovel guitar slide and finger picking. Okay. Then that was Justin Johnson. So there's another one we're going to check out. Um, Dean said she's like 
Billy Strings. Is that the Molly Molly Tuttle? Okay, I'm gonna check that. Let's see here. Um, and Jim said she's a bluegrass player. Alternate tuning's just great. Fantastic. Got a new new person to listen to. Me too. Co, Co says Andy Wood. Think he sticks to electric now, but his bluegrass roots are obvious and tears it up like Molly Tuttle. Awesome. I'm gonna check Andy too. Uh, let's see here. Scott, you fell in love with Joe Bonamassa acoustic playing. <laughs> Unbelievable. The man, you know, he's he's he can do anything. He he really can. Um, I, I'm very impressed by Joe Bonamassa. He's come a long way. Oh man. I have the um I've got the album the CD that when he first started playing that it was a it was a group that they had like kids from other famous people like um Almond Brothers kids and forget the name of the band and he was just fast you know and he has really come a long way very tasteful well i think it was back steve would remember this but back when i had the store on ingleside um somebody was talking about joe bonamassa and he said ah he was just some technician that had no soul or anything uh the man is amazing and there's an acoustic kind of a blend electric that he does with John Hyatt in New York called Down Around My Place. And if you want to know what feeling is on an electric guitar, of course, there's acoustics with it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I mean, that's the most moving, one of the most moving tunes I've ever heard. Steve, say, okay. Steve says, Bloodline. That's right, Bloodline. Yeah, I've known Joe Ma I've known of Joe, Joe Bonamassa since Bloodline. Um, I actually watched the thing. I think BB King got him yeah. known in the beginning. I didn't. I came in after that after uh, with Bloodline, but yeah, he's come a long way. Um, Jim says Eddie did some amazing stuff on acoustic too. He did amazing stuff on anything. He's another one of those like uh, Tommy Emmanuel, which he was. 100% on autopilot and he was a uh, like a Hendrix would carry his guitar everywhere he would go and was always playing it was another one of those guys who were just well you think well it's just effortless for them well it is effortless for them because they put the hours in hours and hours and hours and at that point you can think about what you have for dinner that day mm -hmm. and pull off some amazing amazing stuff uh, Coke says, Kebmo and Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is another one. Taj Mahal is fantastic. Um, yeah, the, 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 I like the, I like all his different stages. You know, us being at Central Georgia, I'm not now, but, you know, the Central Georgia stuff, his kind of early, the Allman Brothers style stuff is you, you hear a whole lot, but he had some really, really fantastic different styles too. He would, he's really kind of could cross into anything, I really think. So yeah, Taj Mahal is a good one too. Good, good thought. I didn't think of him before. Okay. All right. So there we are. Now with Kev Mo, they've got their, their last album out. I heard about that. Was it good? I haven't, I haven't Excellent. listened to it. Very good. Very good. Okay. We've got some, we got some players that we threw on you and you guys threw a bunch back at us. I think we all have a lot of listening to do and yeah. isn't it a good thing to listen? You know, there's so many times where as a, as a practicing musician, that we focus on the things that we're working on and we don't, we don't really spend a lot of time listening as much as we should. So, so I'm going to have a listening week here. Kenny said, Kenny said, Buddy Miller, not familiar with Buddy Miller. That's going um, back. Let's see here. And then Coke says, Justin King, the song I mentioned in particular is an innovative uh, acoustic style. I think a lot of you would be impressed. Might just post it. But yeah, put a bit up in the fa uh, Facebook group. Um, I'm going to be, I don't know if you guys saw that. I put a, I put a, a pick up today. Um, I've been working on the Academy and it's close to being finished. <laughs> so I have my... 
I'll start getting some sleep and having some time to hang out a little bit more in the Facebook group too. Oh, Steve said, um, Jose Feliciano. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So many good ones. So many good ones. So, uh, well, th this is the reason that I thought this kind of a show, an acoustic show with Scooter would be a lot of fun. Hanging out, just talking about some stuff, learning some new things, you know, helping, you know, keep people interested in what they're doing and, and uh, lifting everybody up a little bit. So this was a lot of fun. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us today. And um, I, and make sure that you head over to the show notes page and check out all the different um, clips that I put up there for, for all the players we talked about. And also make sure that you go... Um, Oh, and that's it. Okay, so that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the notification bell so you can get all of my content as soon as it comes out. For more episodes, lessons, and ways to get involved with the Play Guitar community, visit PlayGuitarPodcast.com. Thanks again, and we will see you soon. Thank you so much, Lee, and see you, Kenny. Steve, say hello to Kim for me, and I'll see you all in a few weeks. Hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks. Thanks for hanging out with us today. And I would do. I want to thank um, Steve and Kenny and Coke, Jim, all the way from Australia. And uh, let's see here. Dean. Uh, let, let's see. David was here. Evan. Great to see you, Evan. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk, uh, Kevin was here earlier. Captain Splendiferous, not sure who you are, but that's a, that's, I'm all about Captain Splendiferous. That's a great name. Great handle. Uh, Kelly was here. Good to see you, Kelly. Uh, and let's see, who else do we have in the chat? I think that might be everybody. If I missed you, I apologize, but I think I got everybody. And big love from Rob back. Man, good to see you. I hope everything's going good for you, Rob. Okay. Well, we're going to call it today. And, uh, can you believe it's been a month since the last one? It feels like we just did this last week. I know. I was going to mail you a, a, a microphone, and it's, it's still sitting right where I said I was going to mail it to you. <laughs> I look one forward to it. it it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of fun. You make it easy, Lee. Well, that's what it's about. It's about having some fun and hanging out. So, All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.